In this video, we'll be trying to find the resultant force, resultant angle, and resultant diagram for this particular question. Just like in our previous example, we said your first task in solving problems of this nature would be to draw the free body diagram. So let's draw a free body diagram. And I said for free body diagram, it's simply you trying to show all the forces acting on the system. And it starts by drawing your x and y axis, which is this. So we have this here. Now if I look at this, I have three forces there. 60 pounds, right? So LB shows pounds. And then I have 45 pounds, right? So this LB is pounds. And then 50 pounds. The first thing I have there is 60 pounds, um, which is at 25 degrees to the x-axis. That's 60 at 25 degrees to the x-axis. So let's get this done. So the first thing I have there is 60 degrees um, or 60 pounds at 25 degrees. So I'll call this 60 pounds at 25, 25, 25 degrees, 25 degrees to the horizontal. Next up, I have this one here, which is 40 pounds, and it's 60 degrees to the horizontal. As you can see here, that's um, 40 pounds, 60 degrees. Okay, so I have 40 pounds, 60 degrees. I'll do this here. I'll have this as 40 pounds. This is 60 degrees. And then finally, what I have there is 50 pounds at 50 degrees to the vertical. Please observe, it's between this force and the vertical. By vertical, I mean y-axis, right? So 50 pounds at 50 degrees to the vertical, all right? Um, just come here and add that. Right, I'll put this as 50 pounds. So 50 pounds at the angle here is the vertical. That's um, 50 degrees. So we have this. All right, so we have this here. Don't forget, this is a positive x-axis. This is a positive y-axis. This is a negative x-axis. This is the negative y-axis. So I have this. All right, so what's the first thing to do here? The first thing to do is to get our summation summation of horizontal forces so summation of horizontal forces and we said this is simply sigma f that's force horizontal is x so i have this and that's equal to now we said for each of these you have to watch your quadrant first thing says let's start with the 60 degrees if i resolve 60 degrees to the vertical what you have there is a positive x that becomes plus x or positive becomes plus positive 60 then since the angle here is between the force and the horizontal line what you have there is cos all right so it becomes 60 cosine of the angle the angle is 25 60 cos 25 right i have to put i there to show that it's the horizontal axis next up let's look at the next one there the next thing that we have is 40 degrees this 40 pounds means this resolve this to the horizontal it becomes this one here that's the positive x axis it becomes plus 40 so i have plus 40 the angle here is between the the angle given is between the force and the horizontal that becomes cosine of course the angle there is 60 so i have plus 40 cos 60 um, degrees. Alright, so I'll just bring this down here. Plus 40 cos 60 degrees I. The last force I have there is 50 pounds. If I resolve 50 pounds to the horizontal, that's the x axis, what I have here is negative x. It becomes minus 50. Again, observe that unlike the other two, the angle given is between the force and the vertical. Please take note. It's between the force and the vertical axis. That's y axis. And in this case, the trick function we use is sine. All right. So please take note. The difference here is that for this one here, it was between the force and the horizontal. That's between the force and the x axis. So we used cos for this. For this one, between the force, look at this, the force and the x axis. So we used cos of the angle 60. But in this case, it's between the force and the y axis. So 
So what we use for horizontal components is actually sine. Right? So take note. And then the angle there is 50 degrees. So you have this. So it becomes minus 50 sine 50 degrees. Let's get this done. Um, minus 50 sine 50 degrees. Let's get this done. All right. So minus 50 sine 50 degrees. So you know why I'm using sine. Minus 50. Also know why it's negative. Sine 50 degrees. Also I. I will just go ahead to get my final answer. So I'll have that sigma fx is equal to. So please punch this correctly. Um, let me punch this. So first thing I have 60 cosine 25. Make sure your angle is in degrees. Okay. Plus 40 cosine 60. Okay. Then we have what again there. Minus minus 50 sine 50. Alright, if you punch this, what I'm getting here is 30, so please punch correctly, 30.08 approximately Newton. Now, since this is the x-axis, it will come with what? An I there, right? Let me use this direction here. This is direction, an arrowhead, an arrowhead again to show direction. Alright, so I'm done with horizontal forces. Let me get summation of vertical forces. So let's see, summation of vertical forces all right for summation of vertical forces i have sigma of f y and that's equal to let's get for vertical for the first one here now we said if you're resolving forces to the vertical that's resolving this force here to the vertical all right, so you can see it's a positive, it becomes plus 60. Now, when the angle given is between the angle and the horizontal, if I'm resolving to the vertical, it becomes sine. Sine of the angle, that's 25. So I have this. So I have 60 sine 25. This becomes plus 60 sine 25. Of course, for vertical, you have J. J shows vertical. Next up, let's go to the next force there. Next force there is 40. If I want to resolve 40 to the vertical, that means 40, I'll push it to the vertical, the y-axis. It becomes a negative of y. That becomes negative of the force there, 40. And then the angle is between the force and the horizontal, as you can see here. And that becomes sine. I'm having sine of the angle there, 60. So minus 40 sine 60. Minus 40 sine 60 also in j and then one final one there which is 50 push fit to the y-axis if i push it to the y-axis it becomes this one to this way here that becomes negative 50. now observe that unlike the other two cases the angle here is between the force and the vertical all right if the angle is between the force and the vertical if i want to get the vertical component it becomes cosine it becomes cos of the angle there 50. Right for these other ones, the angle was between the force that's this and the horizontal that's the x axis that's 60. So we use sine in this other case. The angle was between also the force and the vertical axis that was the angle given as 25. So we use sine, but in this case, the angle given is between the force and the vertical axis that's the y axis. So what we use there is cos. So that's how it works basically. Okay. Um, by the way, I've, I've treated this one here, this concept, from the very scratch in our previous class. I'll leave a link to get the beginning class on this in the video description, all right? So check video description for the link after this video, all right? So check the video description and you'll see the link to get this explanation from the very scratch. But what we have here is minus 50 cos 50 um, newton. So minus 50 cos 50 g. Right, so you can add your newton there if you want to. All right, let's punch this. So sigma fy is equal to what I have here is 60 sine 60 sine 25 minus 40 sine 60 minus 50 sine and 50 sine 50. All right. So if I punch this, what I have here is minus 47.59 newton this is for g all right so i have this 
All right, let's not get the resultant force. The first thing we ask there is resultant force. For this, we'll have that the resultant force that's um, sigma, that's um, FR, FR is equal to, the formula is simply the square root of sigma FX, so sigma FX, this one here, all squared plus sigma FY, this all squared. Let's put in values, this is equal to the square root the square root of for fx all right let's get sigma fx sigma fx is equal to 30.08 so that gives you this is 30.08 all squared plus let's get sigma fy sigma fy is minus 47.59 so minus 47 0.59 squared. All right. All right. So let's get this done. I'm just going to show you the final answer. My final answer is that sigma fr is equal to. Please punch this correctly. I'll just go ahead to punch this correctly. Square root of 30.08 squared plus minus 47 in brackets please plus 59 all squared in brackets. If you do this correctly, your answer would be 56.30 approximately in Newton. So basically, this is my. Um, oh, by the way, so did I say Newton? Oh, it reminds me. Please, let's go back to this. This is not in Newton. We're giving this in pounds. Oh, so this is this pounds. So LBJ, that's pounds. This is also in pounds. Um, sorry about that in pounds so l b i all right so that's in pounds please also in pounds please all right so 56.30 pounds l b that's your answer let's get the angle so let's get resultant angle resultant angle the theta is equal to tan inverse of sigma fy all over sigma fx right show your direction show your direction that's equal to tan inverse of sigma fy fy is minus 47.59 minus 47.59 all over so minus 47. 5, 9, all over. All right, let's see sigma fx. From this, sigma fx, it's um, 30.08, and that's um, 30.08. So we have this. All right, with this, let's now take the um, angle there. So from here, we'll have that the angle is tan inverse of um, minus 47.59 divided by 30.08. And that's about minus 1.58. We punch that. And from here, we'll have that theta is equal to take tan inverse of that. The tan inverse of minus 1.58. And that's about minus 57.67 approximately in degrees. And I said it got a negative. All right, so that becomes 57.67 degrees that's your answer all right so basically um this is the value of that angle okay all right so with this now let's see how we can get a diagram all right, so resultant diagram resultant diagram all right for this one here to get a resultant diagram record that we said your first step would be to get your Cartesian coordinates, which is this, and then you have this one here. Okay, this is your positive x axis, this is your negative x axis, this is your positive y axis, then below here is negative y axis. Now, if you look at this, 
If I look at this value here, you got that this is actually tan inverse of sigma y fy all over sigma fx. And observe that sigma fy is negative. So this means I'm, I'm, I'm plotting negative y against, this is the x-axis, positive x, all right? All right? Sigma fy, sigma fy gave us a negative, which means a negative of y. Sigma fx gave, gave us a positive, which means positive of x. So it gets for the quadrant that is negative y and positive x, which in this case here, negative y and positive x is this quadrant here, this particular quadrant. All right, so I'll just come here and put this as this. All right, and the resultant f r is simply equal to the value there of f r is simply equal to 56.30 pounds. That's um. 56.30 pounds and the angle there is 57.67 degrees that will be between this and the, this that becomes um 57.67 degrees all right 57.67 degrees all right so basically this is how you solve this question all right all right guys so i've prepared a complete playlist for Applied mechanics, all right, or solid mechanics, all right. You can visit my website www.jonaimanu.com forward slash courses and you see the second year undergraduate one course, all right. So you can get the course and it give you access to some exclusive videos on applied mechanics, all right. You can also join the second year undergraduate student, all right. So you can see the second year undergraduate student there. You can join in to also get exclusive contents for. Um, applied mechanics or solid mechanics. All right. I'll leave a link to both my website and to join my second year undergraduate membership group in the video description and in the pinned comment. All right. All right, guys. So if you enjoyed this video as usual, please hit the like button. All right. So like this video, it helps us to grow. Leave a comment. If you have any question, leave a question in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed this video, tell us you enjoyed this video in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if it's your first time of you yet to subscribe please subscribe to this channel all right and of course hit the like hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we upload a new content and finally share this video to your friends so that they can also learn thank you and see you in our next class